there, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 1 of the Nova Scotia Kitchens Podcast, Marilyn's Luskinigan. I'm Sherry Graham, and I am delighted to welcome you to Season 3 of the podcast. I had no idea when I started this project how much fun it would be, and I am so glad to be able to bring you more visits from home kitchens in my favorite province of all. So welcome, whether you're new or have been listening for a while, I am so glad that you're here. On today's show, you get to join me in Marilyn's kitchen. There is so much laughing in this episode. We had such a great time together. Marilyn makes Luskinigan, or Luski for short, which is a traditional Mi'kmaq quick bread. It's baked in the oven, and then while that was cooking, she also made four cents bread, which is a pan-fried bread, and it was delicious. Marilyn shares the ingredient that you probably don't put in your potato salad but should, and my favorite gems about the main ingredient that should be in everything that you make. As Marilyn says, you might need to make these a few times to get the feel just right, and it will be worth it. Here we go. Yeah, fun? yeah. Okay. You can start whenever. So I can start talking about people now. All right. <laughs> well, my grandmother used to always make loose skin again and four cents cake and molasses cake when I was a kid. But I never learned to make it until I moved here. Oh. My godfather kind of was from. Um, I'm just gonna put this here so make sure it fits everything. Indian book. So. He came and you down. say Lusky? Yeah, loose skin again. Yeah. Okay. And people say, well, what does it mean? Loose skin? I don't know. Indian bread. Zanuck. People call it Zanuck. Yeah. I don't think it's really Zanuck. Like the Jews. They say loose skin again. You skill again? Loose skill again? Loose, loose skin again. Gin again. Yeah. Loose Got again. it. Loose skin again. Yeah. Uh, loose skin yeah. for short. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so my godfather came down to visit me when I first moved here. The very first time I moved here, I lived in a little up the road, little cement building. So he said, you know, Douglas, I'm going to teach you how to make some four cents, and I'm going to teach you how to make some loose skin again. I said, okay. So he did. So he's the one, this is, I guess, his recipe. And he just said, you know, just just do it the same, and it will always come out the same. Perfect. Right? Yeah. So it was pretty simple. So I watched him, and that's just what he did, right? So today, though, we're going to make a small one, so it will cook fast, and you can okay. take it home with you. Thank you. <laughs> I made that is you, so sweet and of I you. could even probably maybe do a four cents, just to show you. I mean, the, the only difference yeah. with the four cents is you don't put um, shortening in it or anything. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to do it the way I was taught. Yeah. I mean, I do it different ways now. You know, like I use coconut oil, and yeah. you know, I don't put in the salt. Yeah. If I use um, sweetener, it's um, up here. Krista, Krista. Yeah. Put it in, you know, diabetic. Yeah, yeah. So I try to, you know, improvise. I tried to eat whole wheat once. People said it was good. I, I didn't find it it was that good. <laughs> it was I just a lot more dense. It, it was, was like, more, yeah, yeah like heavy. heavy. Yeah. yeah, so I was like, hmm. But they were like, oh my God, this is so good. I said, yeah, I don't want to get cold. Once it gets cold, you better hang it up. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's true. Okay, so before you came, I cleaned up all my little work. I'm going to work yeah, at my little yeah. workstation. I took this food handler cord. <laughs> I love you following everything by the letter. <laughs> so I was like, bam. I, but ever since I took this course, I'm throwing food away. Like I told my daughter, I made her a cake and um, stuffed shells. Yeah, yeah. So she goes, yeah, save them up. So I kind of wrap them up. I put them in the fridge. Next day, I'm like, well, you coming over for your shells? <laughs> She's like, uh, like I have it in the fridge. I said, yeah, yeah, I'll be over. I'll be over. Okay. Looking at the cake. <laughs> I said, well, the cake's been on the table now. I'm going on the second day. <laughs> You're just picturing all the bacteria <laughs> growing. <laughs> so she comes over and takes a piece of cake. It's still good, Mike. <laughs> so, where this is a, um, a 
smaller um, blue scoop. I even use a smaller pan. Yeah. And the one thing you have to know is when you're done clean, when you're done your 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 bread, and you you got to clean your pan right away. Because it, will it make like it's cement? Sticky and it's sticky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And it's yeah. hard to clean. Yeah. Especially when I do bread, it's like, oh my God. So you gotta clean it right away. All your utensils, everything. Clean and you use the same cup. You don't go swapping your cups around and saying, oh well, you know. So, hmm. <laughs> that kind of looks like a, a three cupper. And so you're uh, using a mug to measure. I love this because people at home always have their measuring cups. Their, yeah, their measuring yeah. cups or their, <laughs> their mugs. So I that's think, about, about three cups, yeah? You think that's three cups? Yep. Mm. I do. Or Maybe you're going so. by your three cups. I'm going by, yes, ah, I'm going by like see, actual. I see. <laughs> you can't even swap that three cup around <laughs> in your mind. You stick with this. <laughs> with the mug. So I'm thinking if I share the recipe with people who don't have your beautiful mug. <laughs> Well, it's whatever mug yeah. you use, whatever cup you use. It's oh, so it's always, like proportions. Yeah. So it's you, whatever. okay. Like you said, that's three cups in your a language. Regular. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, that's like mm, maybe two and a half cups. Okay. In my language. Okay. So we'll put a little more. Okay. To me, that's three cups. All right. And so that's then a you take your regular bacon. white flour yep. in a big mixing bowl. Yep. Original. Well, I use different. I use the original and I use the um, the other one. Oh, the unbleached? The unbleached. Yep. They said, well, why would you want to use uh, bleached flour? You know, that's poison. Well, I don't know. <laughs> it was on sale. The bread yeah. is whiter. <laughs> <laughs> so with each cup, you put a teaspoon, a tablespoon, I'm sorry. Boom. This is a tablespoon. Oh, okay, a baking powder. Yeah. Um, okay. One tablespoon baking powder per cup. Three. Okay. Yeah, no, a little extra. <laughs> so then you take your salt, I know, um, probably half a teaspoon. Yeah. And just like maybe. <laughs> For people who are different. listening to this, Marilyn's using her hand to scoop some sugar <laughs> out. So, so that's about it. That was about a, like a little less, like a level tablespoon. Okay. And then you mix up all your little dry ingredients. Oh my god, I never do that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure it's perfect every time. It is, uh, it is. So, once that's done, take your short one. You can use whatever short one you want. I just happen to have this one because why? It was on sale. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> And usually I started using um, olive oil. Yeah. You know. Does so you want to take about. I think it's probably a quarter cup. Yeah. Well, maybe Ish. just. In mine. <laughs> in your, in your lingo. <laughs> My lingo. <laughs> okay, um. yeah. So, to me, like. Yeah, almost half a cup, probably. I would Between say, like, uh, maybe three. <laughs> Three tablespoons, maybe. Yep. Three. Yep. That's what it looked like. Big fluff tablespoons. Then you. Ooh, that. And as you're doing this, you're thinking of all good things. You're thinking about love. You're thinking about your family and how much you're gonna love this. You know, because they say whatever you put in your food and what kind of energy that you're as you do this. Don't be like. Oh. No angry. No eating. anger. <laughs> no. Yeah, because they said it will reflect. You know, you could be at your table and you could be like really pissed off or whatever, doing your cooking, slamming things around. Maybe you're mad. Something happened at work. I don't know anything. And then when you sit down to feed your family, that's what's gonna transpire maybe. in your cooking. And maybe a fight might break out at the table. An yeah. argument. So you might get up and leave. You know. Yeah. So you you cook. I always tell my grandchildren, cook with love. Your main ingredient is love. Oh, I love that so much. So, once you get that, your flour will be like this. Ooh. Ooh. It's quite um, 
like that. Yeah, sticking together a little bit, but crumbly, yeah. kind of sandy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you know the words. I'm like, you know. <laughs> You know what it's supposed to look like. I don't even try to explain it. Yeah, like, you know, uh, once you do that. Yeah, because you know what it's supposed to look like. (laughs) I was going to see, I even bought the beans. I was going to make homemade beans. So that would be what you usually serve with it? Yep. Is that the kind of Homemade beans, potato salad, and ham. Ooh, yum. I love potato salad. I haven't had that in a long time. But I was doing... um, That's fine. (laughs) I was doing beadwork last night. So... Yeah, okay. So that's about what you want. And some people yeah. do it different. I mean, you know, not everyone does it like this, but this is the way I was taught. Yeah. And, and that's super uniform. That's what I, I do. And then some people use warm water, some people use cold water. I use like room temperature. Yeah. Some people use milk, buttermilk, you know. Yeah. It's on the wet. <laughs> they kind of do something, whatever they like. I just do it. <laughs> so it's getting poured directly into the bowl. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I didn't measure it, but you can it's tell. See, you go like this. Look in there. Yeah. See how it looks? Yeah. It's kind of sticky. Yeah, it's kind of sticky and turning kind of like a batter. Yeah. Kind of more than a. Not a batter that you put over your fish, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all you're going to taste. <laughs> So see oh, yeah, once yeah. you kind yep. of get it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And the baking powder is starting to kick in. Do its thing, right? Yeah. All right. So nice. So it looks really fluffy, done, I would call it. Slap that in there. So I'm going to, so you butter your little pan that you're going to use. And so oh, yes, in your stove. You have to put your stove on before you start anything. And you put it on at 400. Okay, 400, perfect. Oh, I love that pan that you're using. Yeah. Um, That's like a kind of high-sided, like a deep dish yeah. pie pan almost, I would. My, um, the shape of it. used to be my mom's. Oh, nice. So, so you butter it up pretty good. Then you take... A little bit of flour. Slap it on there. And so I I was always told if your your pan looks like this after yeah. your loose is gonna be good. Okay, so it kinda has like little stuck, you know what, I'll take a picture. <laughs> Kind of little stuck bits kind of around, yep. the, around the edge. So you don't want to knead it too much. You're just like moving it. Yeah. And, you know, you're just like trying to get that sticky stuff off because if you knead it too much, then it's going to be hard. Right. Yeah. But you want to make sure it's all... I know people say, oh, it's like this and it's like that. Yeah, well, whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> it looks lovely. So you're kind of just shaping it into a... Shaping it into like a, a ball. Just so that it will... Oh, it looks smooth and like just lovely. Okay, it's really see? pretty. Like it's so smooth and just, yeah. Okay. Then you take your little pan. See, it doesn't take long to do. No, that's really quick. And then you put it in your pan. And you're kind of patting it down to pat it down. go not, all the way not, to the side. Yeah, not a lot, just so that it fits in your... And they say you nice. never use a sharp knife because a sharp knife sometimes is used for a weapon. So you uh, don't okay. want that. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. So you use a spoon, but I, I like using a all the good dots still. And you kind of like try to even it out. Sometimes people like the ends part because it's crusty. Mm-hmm. Oh, your sons are going to so like good. this because <laughs> they liked it when we were at the... Oh, they did at the workshop. I think they probably ate all of it. Yeah, they, they were eat like, nonstop. They were like, um, can I have some more? <laughs> So this is oh, perfect. What it you looks just like. like that for a second. 
Same pan, and we're gonna make the. That's about two cups. <laughs> <laughs> Some flour went in the bowl. Okay. Yeah, a generous <laughs> two cups, I would say. <laughs> well, it all depends on your frying pan. So we're gonna use this one. Oh, that is a beautiful cast iron. And this one is um, called Four Cents. Okay. My aunt told me make a Four Cents Marilyn. It's like okay, okay, and she said, and you tell her that's what it's that's what it costs to make. I uh, said, yeah, maybe like uh, fifty years yeah. ago. <laughs> I can't think of anything that costs four cents to make. I said it, it's. Um, I went up to five cents or four and a half cents. <laughs> four and a half. Cents. <laughs> uh, and so this one's so done then, on the stovetop. Yeah. So you don't you put your and you heat it up. So while you're heating it up. And that was probably how much? Quarter cup of olive oil in the yeah. pan? Just and to cover it and just a little, you know. Okay. And you're heating that up to a little medium, a little over medium. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll add a little more. Now, the cast iron is my favorite to cook in. We have a pan that was Adam's grandmother's that I make my eggs in every morning. And yeah, we have another one that I got, I think, for a wedding gift. A larger one that we use every single day. It just cooks so well and it has a nice even heat and you can pop it in the oven and yeah, I love it. So you just put like two. So there's just a little bit left. Just add it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because really that's not going to make that much difference. Yeah. yeah. So we mix so that up. Baking powder. I'm going to try to make these myself. See if I can get some approximations for ingredients. So. <laughs> Then you put a little salt. You don't have to put the salt, but that's how I was taught. Yeah. Um, half a Slow teaspoon. <laughs> for us and half. So you mix it up. And that's all you use for that one. Okay. Okay. So there's just the olive oils in the pan. There's the flour, salt, and then the water. So it's very similar, yep. but there's it's just it's not it's the oil or yep. the shortening. Everything is like the same, and you sort of want it a little sticky so it will. The same kind of texture as the other, or a little more wet. Um, right here. Take a look. So it's quite similar, kind of fluffy, but it seems to be holding yep. together a little, a little yep. like maybe a little bit drier. Yep. But that looks lovely. And again, yeah. Your pan. Take a picture of it. <laughs> I was gonna say this one looks stickier. It's only <laughs> a little bit. And that's the four cents. <laughs> okay. So, and the same as you do. Yes, yeah, so you're just kind of gently forming it into a ball. It looks lovely too. Some people put a hole in the middle of it. I don't. Why? Because I don't like how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> Not your thing. So how uh, is this something you would so, make regularly? Yeah. Do you make this pretty often? Yeah. And how long well, have you... Well, when the kids want it, I do. Yeah. This usually takes about... We want to make sure it's all... So there. Beautiful. So it's round. So this is what they would probably call bannock. Okay. And you put your yep. oil. There we go. I was like, this better be on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you don't want to put it in there when it's not hot. You want the oil really hot. hot. Yeah. But you know, hot enough. Uh, not smoking, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a bit too hot. So you just test it with your water, and if it bubbles, like if it. Okay. Yeah. Kind of spits or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And then you put your bread in. And then you just let it sit there, and I think it's like maybe ten minutes one side. And you put your you put your heat down a little. Sometimes you might burn it, but that's still all right. Some people like to burn okay. it on yep. the bottom. Yeah, you know. nice kind of crust or whatever. Yeah. Um, and some people don't. 
And we Salt usually have it with um, butter and yeah, butter and uh, molasses. Yeah. They said back in the old days that used they used to use shortening. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay, I heard a little sizzle over yes. there. Yes, yeah. So you take care. Ready? Oh yeah, so it's definitely kind of bubbling around the edges then. Mm -hmm. And now you can turn it down maybe like to a seven. Okay. Six, I think. You know, it yep. all depends on your, you can, like I can say, you can tell, right? Yeah. You, <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can smell it. You can smell it if it's burning. Yeah. So you definitely want to turn it down. And you know what? We never even checked the time we put the bread in. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so it's I would say about eight minutes ago. That's yeah, that's all right. Yeah, all right. So And how long does that stay in the oven for? Um about twenty minutes. Okay. Twenty five minutes. It, you know, it depends yeah. on the oven too yeah. and how hot it is. And yeah. All right. There. Okay, do you see that over there? It's kind of bubbling. Yeah. Okay, this one. I want you okay. to be aware. Oh, and it's, it's rising a bit too. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, it will rise. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're doing. Okay, and then you're I know, my son's going to say, what? You get that loose going to get away that you bang? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, yes, I did. <laughs> Nobody told me they wanted any. <laughs> Nobody told me you were doing it. <laughs> yeah, so, there. That's wonderful. That is so quick. Like, that's a really quick bread. I think it's a quick bread. <laughs> yep. And so it's usually, I think we have jam with the whiskey. At and molasses. Shop. Jam and molasses. Yeah. Your son ate it. Jam. Yeah. Uh, there was none left for the time I wandered over the table. <laughs> Did I make? I think I might have brought homemade jam. Did I? I oh. usually bring. Um, sometimes I bring homemade jam and. Yum. I bring applesauce. Yum. Because kids like applesauce. Yes. Eh? Yeah. So when I do anything for the kids, that's um, what I do. Because it's about them, right? Yeah. Learn about what I like. <laughs> they definitely like sweet. What kinds of jams do you make? Um, so did I say I made them? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> what I kind? I bring homemade jam. <laughs> yes, you did. You I, did. <laughs> I go to farmers. Farmers market. Yes. Yeah. See, Super so big. I took it off, and where this yeah. is, you know, you don't want it to get too cold. Yeah. So just because it was getting yeah. kind of burny, dark, off the heat a little bit, and then back yeah. on a little bit lower. Yeah. And about how long would you say that this takes on the stove top one? The other one was about 20, what did you say, 20, 20 minutes, 25, 25 minutes. minutes. And then you just check underneath. Oh, things. yeah, can I take pictures? <laughs> <laughs> People will find this helpful. Perfect. So, you can, so when you become a real pro, which I'm not, I call you a pro. <laughs> Let me tell you that. My uncle, well, he didn't use a cast iron frying pan, <laughs> but he had his frying pan and he could, um, because the oil would be gone, yeah. he could take it and just flip it. That's impressive. Very <laughs> impressive. And I'm not even going to attempt to do that. <laughs> I'll put awesome. that out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do is, Well, I'm on a roll yeah. today. <laughs> Usually it's as black as this container. <laughs> no. <laughs> I tell the kids, you eat it. <laughs> it's delicious. I it's good it for you. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that crust? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so is that because it was getting too hot again or is it done now? 
I'm going to take a look and see if it's done. Okay. Oh, that color is beautiful. Get it at its best profile. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. There it is. <laughs> oh, my God. That does look good, don't it? Does. It? <laughs> it does. Good. I'm glad I made it. Oh, it's beautiful. So what I do, I, I open it. Just kind of break it open. Oh, nice. And see? Oh, beautiful. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, and that's nice. done. Nice. It kind of reminds me, strangely enough, my mom used to make stew, like a beef, whatever, cabbage, carrots, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and she would make dumplings. Yeah. And I think, I never really liked, because they were like wet in the yeah. stew or whatever, I like dry bread. Um, but I think how she made them was very similar, like just uh, just kind of your flour and the short, and then just plop them in the... Yeah. In the stew, because the texture and the inside looks that same kind of fluffy sort of yeah. texture. So I have a better word. It could be. I could choke my kids. Not <laughs> if they're adults. They tell me this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we lived in Boston, and uh, I lived with my mom. We lived on Sawyer so Ave. You know, so we used to always make big dinners and stuff, and we make you know would make a stew and would put the dough boys in it. And yeah. So I'd be like, I used to be so proud that when my kids' plates were empty, the doughboys would be gone because a lot of people don't like doughboys. <laughs> Was there a dog around by any chance? No. <laughs> I could have choked them. Because <laughs> um, sometimes they'd eat in their room, right? Yeah. So when they get in there, they would take those doughboys and throw them up and hit the sun. <laughs> and they'd stick up. So, oh my word. Uh, we don't want to your feelings, Mom, but Aww. I said, oh, really? So that's what you did. <laughs> I said, and then they would get rid of them, right? Yeah. I said, yeah, whatever. I remember feeding Brussels sprouts to the dog. I think that was the only time we ever had Brussels sprouts. <laughs> my mom's not much of a cook. I'll cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> but vegetables always got cooked with, like, mush. And Brussels sprouts are good if you're, they're done well, but they were not done. I remember sneaking over and putting them in the dog's dish. I was like, come on, come on. <laughs> he probably left the <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I think I got found out because I don't think the dog would eat them. <laughs> you know what, I don't like Brussels sprouts. I mean, I've tried them. I've tried them with butter. I've tried them with cheese. I've tried them with broccoli. And... Have you tried them roasted in the oven? With a oh. little bit, of, oh, that's what's the magic. Because they get all like, kind of caramelized and they're dry. They're not wet and mushy. So you just like drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. And roast them. Yeah. And they're so good. Because then you can you get the texture, like as you're biting through all the layers of the yeah. stuff, and it's not just like slimy mush stuff. Really? That's the trick. Okay. I should make you some sometime. Okay. <laughs> and it even works, like you can buy them frozen, like yeah. all kind of done up or whatever, and it even works well if they're frozen. Because it Because there's enough air that it kind of dries them out so they don't, yeah, get all you mushy know, in the middle. And what, yeah. what degree? Probably four twenty-five, four hundred, four twenty-five, or maybe. For how long? Ten minutes. Mm, from frozen, probably half an hour, maybe. Oh my goodness! <laughs> if, but if from frozen, if they were maybe half an twenty-five right. minutes, I stir them around every. Kind of depends. You don't want them burned, minutes? but you want yeah. them like a little bit charred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Give them a little toss. I got you. Oh yeah, they're good. They're take good. Some, take oh. <laughs> I won't answer, but my mom is calling. She ah. must have heard me. <laughs> she must have heard me talking about the Brussels sprouts I didn't like. <laughs> Are you talking about Brussels sprouts? Uh... Uh. Well, see, I'm so glad you came over. If you didn't come over now, I wouldn't have had no four cents to go with my stew. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> and I didn't learn how to make homemade bread until I got here. My grandmother made homemade bread. I remember as a kid, she was trying to show me, and I was like, so she gave me a little clump of dough. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She said, don't eat that. <laughs> and so she let me make a little thing <laughs> and put it in the oven. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I ever ate it. It was like all dirty and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. all. <laughs> Hard. That's how it yeah. oh. But I learned here when I moved here. And I remember a friend of mine, you know from Boston, and he was so funny. 
He was like, um, when he see me baking and stuff, because I remember I tried making Lucy in Boston one time, and you know, my first one came out so good. It was so delicious, right? Yeah. But I was like, man, I got this down. And then I tried the second one, and I was like, what the <laughs> heck? It was as hard as a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to pawn it off. <laughs> they were like, we ain't eating that, you know, we're gonna break our teeth. <laughs> Can use it for a puck <laughs> So I never tried it again. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that was horrible. I went through like a bag of a bag flour. Of flour. <laughs> Let's see what this is done. Oh, it's risen up beautifully. Oh, it's so pretty. Eleven. I get really excited. <laughs> I get really excited about everything. Okay, let's see if it's done. And so you're doing the same kind of thing and yeah, that's bending what I it. Do. Yeah. <laughs> For people who are listening, kind of bending it. Yeah, you open it up. Yeah. Just to see if it's done in the middle. Nope. Not yet. Nope. So you slap it back in just like that. Nobody will ever know. That's right. <laughs> That's how you Pull do it. Right back in. Of oh. course, when I'm gonna, when I'm showing somebody, of course it's not cooked. <laughs> it's like, I right, I get that. I then, this is the second time <laughs> that happened to me. And the first time was I was showing somebody. And when I took it out, it wasn't cooked all the way through. <laughs> so see that? You don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So if a bunch of white people watch, look at this, <laughs> see your picture yeah. and whatever, what would you like them to be thinking about or to research or to uh, kind of be focused on realizing that it's a tr traditional Mi'kmaq recipe that they're making? You can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody pays me. I have no sponsors. I have. <laughs> um, that they, you know, that when they cook, that they do it when they're in a good spirit, that they're in a good way, and to realize that they're... Um, Cooking for their family, mm. you know. Yeah, just um, respect and <laughs> <laughs> love. Love is the main ingredient, like I yeah. tell my grandsons. Yeah. Um, yeah, and not to be, you know, and if it doesn't come out the way they, they think it should come out, you know, just give it another try. Yes. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. Like, like I said. That. Yeah. My, my second one was good. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's funny how food seems like such a simple thing. Yeah. But everybody needs to eat every day. And everybody has memories of the food that they ate growing up. And it's always connected to people. And you think it's like, oh, and this person used to make that yeah. dish. And it's all, yeah. It's pretty special. With my cousin Corey, and I, I never... So when I make... A potato salad, I think, of my cousin Corny because she's the one that told me. Yeah. Put a cucumber in a cousin. Oh. And I said, really? She said, yeah. I said, ew. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, you like cucumber? I said, yeah. She goes, you like mayonnaise? I said, yeah. <laughs> she goes, well, you're going to like it in your potato salad. I said, okay. So, and so that's how I make my potato huh. salad. I put a cucumber in I have it. never heard of putting cucumber in it, but yeah. Yeah, and I kind of thought, oh, yeah, well, but yeah. I love cucumber. It's <laughs> delicious, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, when I do a gathering, I always bring food because food is sacred and, and that's mm -hmm. our fuel to survive. Yeah. So that's why when I cook, I, I do my best and I, and I provide and I give my best because that's, you know, my, my grandmother taught me that. You know, you don't just throw something together and say, here. Yeah. You know, because that represents you as well. Yeah. As anything in life, right? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so it's just a little more done. kind of browned. And, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, see? Oh, it's super steamy. And yeah, that's definitely. There you go. This oh. is yours. Oh, that one came out really nicely. I'll brighten it up a little Ooh. bit. Isn't that nice? There you go, my dear. Oh, my goodness. That is so sweet of you. So, and they say the trick 
to know if you're a good Lucy maker oh. <laughs> is that you can eat it without nothing. And it's still good. And it's still good. And if you can eat it the next day when it's cold. Oh, yeah. Or when it's cold, if you can eat it. Then it's good. Then it's good. Oh, that is lovely. So don't don't go saving a piece and see if it's going to be good tomorrow. No. <laughs> oh, if I set my voice loose, that, well, they'll make short work of that. <laughs> and I can't wait. Right. No, I'm just kidding. Aww. Thank you. How do I say thank you? Willalin. Willalin. Willalin Dallin. Thanks so much to Marilyn for welcoming me into her kitchen and for the great visit and all of the laughter. As you're combining your ingredients, you should be thinking about all good things. Love, your family, how much you love the people who will be enjoying the bread. Whatever energy you put into your food is reflected at the table. I love that so much. Cook with love. Your main ingredient should always be love. Thank you, Marilyn. Printable recipes for the Loose Skinnigan and Four Cent Spread and photos from our visit are up at novascotiakitchens.com. Thanks so much to Julian Smith for the podcast music and to Adam Graham for technical help and for generally being awesome. And of course, thanks to you for listening. You can connect with me on Instagram at Nova Scotia Kitchens or on the Facebook page. I'll be back with a new episode in April. What's this okay. called? So a podcast, right? Podcast, yep. Nova Scotia Kitchen's podcast. For? Um, I'm too, I'm, no, no, I'm too short, so everything looks like I'm looking up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I stand <laughs> I climbed all over people's kitchens. <laughs> it's not a little by you up there. <laughs> Stranded up here forever. Hi there. Ah, oh, there's cars going by. Hang on. <laughs> and there's a big truck. Okay.